Everyone stand please. Case and Alton Sue, dispatch of its business. Can I see the statements on the The Honorable Larry B. Langs, Judge Presiding. <coughs> First time I'd like to call upon the Reverend Charles Moore for the invitation. <coughs> I count it an honor to be here for this occasion, and I want to thank the family for including me in this dedication service. Would you bow for the invocation? For the occasion that brings us together today, and for the life and influence of the man we honor, we give thee thanks, our Heavenly Father. As we dedicate this room hereafter to be known as the Phillips Courtroom, we pray that those judges who will sit upon its bench and those attorneys who will argue their cases here may forever be reminded of the dedication and unswerving faith which Ralph Phillips had in the legal system of this land and of this state. Father, we pray for Ralph's family today in their lostness and in their grief. May they, through this service today and ceremony, be lifted up in spirit, knowing how many lives that Ralph touched, and the lives that he influenced through the course of his life. We thank thee for him, Father, and for this day that we honor his name. Amen. I'm just going to say a couple of brief words before I turn it over to some of the folks that uh, had specifically been requested to make some comments, and then we'll have the presentation of what I feel is a, a, a beautiful portrait that will be hung in this courtroom. It certainly is a unique thing in Gaston County uh, to have a courtroom dedicated to an individual, and it says uh, a, tre a tremendous amount of what the folks involved in the courthouse and in the justice system think about Judge Phillips. And I'd just like to say that, uh, briefly, that what strikes me as I get bogged down in numbers and statistics that I know Ralph was bogged down in as chief. Raleigh always wants to know how we're doing on innumerable sets of statistics and stats, and there's this great pressure to always look good on paper and crank out the cases and be current on everything is that one of the things I have to keep reminding myself that I don't think Judge Phillips ever had to remind himself is that behind every one of those statistics is an individual who needs their day in court and an individual who needs their degree of justice. Ralph had a unique ability and capacity to be in touch with the human elements uh, something that in today's days and times with the tremendous rush and increase in cases, it's easy to forget. And I myself always have to make a conscious effort to remember, in spite of the statistics that have to be kept, the justice that must be done involves individuals. And that, in my opinion, was one of the unique qualities about Judge Phillips is that he was an absolute master at being in touch and instinctively was in touch with uh, human beings that are, in fact, the statistics, the faceless statistics that go to Raleigh. Nobody was faceless to Ralph, and none of them were just little statistics to Ralph. And I think everybody in this courtroom is well aware of that fact. At this time, I would like to turn the podium <coughs> over to Mr. Basil Whitener, who's going to say a couple of comments. Thank you. Your Honor, Chief Judge Blackson and our distinguished Superior Court Judge Gaines. A short season ago, I sat with some sadness, made remarks in this courtroom upon the passing of our friend Judge Phillips. Today, I proudly make comments at the request and with deep appreciation to the family 
and what I hope will be a happy occasion as we remember uh, our late friends. You know, as you go through life, you know many people, and I suppose it can be said that all people <coughs> walking among us make a contribution to one sort or another. Many people understand things not understood by others. Judge Phillips understood that great damage could be done to society and to all with whom we came into contact by the insolence of the demagogues and conceited asses. He never permitted himself forget that even though he attained a position which gave him authority over the lives of others, that they too were human beings entitled to compassion, consideration, and yet to be required to live up to the rules of society. He had a, an uncanny affection for people. All of us who have been around this courthouse have wondered at times, why would he be here at 5.30 in the evening or later, talking to some nondescript, we would think, individual who had a problem, but he was here. He daily honored the principle which we see over our Supreme Court building in Washington that there must be equal justice under law. He daily honored his father and his mother. He daily lived up to the preachment of the prophet Micah, who admonished us to do justly, to love mercy, mercy, and walk humbly with our God. And so as this courtroom today is dedicated to his memory. I think that those of us who knew and loved him could speak for him and I shall undertake to do so. And say that he got great joy out of his construction, his constant and daily attention to the building of the courtroom. He read, I think Lou Bobo will tell you, the greatest of pride in its completion. And what a joy it was to us to see him be able to occupy this as his courtroom that prior to his untimely passing. This man of high character, of constant devotion to duty, of loyalty to friends and family, of the church, the political party, cause of the administration of justice, this man of good humor and the common touch, this man whose earthy interests included milking cows, and raising gardens, sharing the bounty of his husbandry with his neighbors, to this man who had constant love and devotion for his dear mother who is now over 90 years of age, and his devoted wife, Ida, and these children, grandchildren. And yet this man who I believe had a devotion for those of us who shared his profession. And so today, we honor a man. But I think that more importantly, we honor the principles for which he labored, the character which he constantly displayed, the gifts of service to family, profession, community, state, and the cause of justice, which he so bountifully, bountifully provided. And so may I say, on this occasion, another farewell to our friend, but a thanks to those who have made it possible for us to have a tangible evidence of his having walked with us. Thank you. Give me 
You know, I'm indeed proud to be here today to speak a few words about Ralph. I don't know how many of you know this, but in the late years of 59, 60, those years, five lawyers came to this community, five young lawyers. One of the young ones was Judge Robert Gaines. You know how long ago it was. There were three other young lawyers who came with me at that time. <coughs> Phil Harrell, Henry Fowler, Ralph Phillips, and myself. And Judge and I are the only two that left. And We knew these people through school and through growing up with them. And, and it's just amazing that the good die young and the rest of us have lived here that, that survived. Ralph and I shared a lot in common. We were both farmers in a way. We spent more time baling hay than most of you have in this courtroom. And it's always fun to listen to him tell me how we needed one more row of hay on top of six or eight rows that were already up there. And I couldn't exactly throw them up there. We had a lot of fun doing that and a lot of other things together. Ralph made famous those words. I know that's what it says, but it don't mean what it says. It means what I say it says. <laughs> and you know, it was an uncommon, common, natural tendency he had that he was right. The people just put the wrong words down. And it did mean what he was saying, and it worked out for the good of all. I don't want to wander too much, so I'm going to read from here on. You know, we're gathered here today are just a few of us who are the people that knew Ralph Phillips. We respected him and even loved him. We do not have, need to go into these many virtues or recall them. It's important, however, that we place all of this into the memory and into the records of this courthouse because it's a fitting memorial in his honor for those who shall come after us. The children and the grandchildren that follow need to be ever reminded of the heritage of the law of this courtroom and of the life of one whom we honor today. If you knew him, you know why we must honor him. Ralph was our expression of judicial caring, tempered with justice and mercy. This was his meaning to the thousands who appeared before him in this court. In honoring him, we honor the best in ourselves. However much we may have differed with each other about his decisions, or differed with him about his decisions, or of his inestimable value as our chief judge, let his going forth from us only serve to bring us together now. We brought our legal problems to him, and those from the great world outside consigned their legal problems to him and came to look upon him as our example of caring of justice, mercy, and a caring heart, the common mother of us all. And we are now secure in the knowledge that those who did pass this way truly were enriched by his presence. Ralph was a friend to all attorneys, in particular to the younger ones. We are seeing even now that his patience and tutorial guiding has brought forth fruit in its season. We are seeing that the seeds of judicial reform and positive action, which he very patiently planted and nurtured, <coughs> will, after the winter of our struggling and striving, rise up to make us proud and to a degree reaffirm that ultimate truth that those who labor in the work of the Lord do not labor in vain. Ralph did what he could. Ralph did whenever he could. And Ralph did it for whomever he could. And we were all rich because he's having been one of us. Thank you. I want to state uh, also that I take great pride in being a part of paying this tribute to Ralph Phillips. Judge Phillips was, at, or after his admission to the bar, he started to practice in Gastonia, as we all know. And at that time, I had been practicing here several years. And from the time that he pra started practicing here and until he became a judge, he and I were adversaries on many occasions, but that fact never caused a breach in our friendship and mutual respect for each other. Uh, many kind things can be said about Ralph Phillips, some that I like to remember most and stand out uh, vividly in my mind are, one, that he loved his family as deeply as anyone I have ever known. He loved the law. It was always his feeling that the law afforded him a chance to be a public servant. As a district court judge, he gained the respect of the bar and at all times accomplished his main objective as a lawyer and judge 
which was to administer justice equally and fairly to all. He was a judge with unending patience, firm when necessary, courageous to the extent that he did what he felt was legally right regardless of possible criticism, and courteous to those who appeared before him. All of these things made him a good and respected judge. He had a mind that understood the problems of the fortunate and the unfortunate, and particularly those who lived in Gaston County. For that reason, he was a considerate and kind man with a keen sense of humor and accordingly a considerate, kind, and fair judge. Ralph Phillips was my personal friend. Your presence here today is evidence that he too was your friend and, your, and you his friend. It is only fitting that this portrait be placed here and the dedication of this courtroom be made in honor of one who gained the love and respect of all of us through his friendship and his unyielding dedication to the promotion of the administration of justice. Jesse Caldwell told me to go and let the oldest lawyer speak first and come on down the line to the younger ones, so I appreciate the compliment. But due condolences to you, gentlemen. Uh, this courtroom is being dedicated to a man who, and a judge, a judge who was dedicated to the making our legal system work. James Ralph Phillips was a man that all these good things have been said about him, merited the truth to him. But I think his uh, first concern was to make sure that our system of justice worked. And he did everything that he could to see that it worked. Now, I've never been a judge and don't hope ever to be one carries a lot of responsibility. But it would seem to me that uh, following the letter of the law might be much easier than finding the right result. And I'm not saying Ralph didn't follow the letter of the law at all times, but he always tried to reach the right result. And he did it in a way that uh, caused people to uh, believe in his uh, system, in the way he applied the system, in the way he did, the uh, way that he rendered his judgments. Ernest Warren used to have an expression for people that knew everything. You know, you've seen those people that come in and they, they just know, have an answer to everything. And he said they had a lot of assumacy. They had a lot of assumacy. Well, you never could accuse Ralph of that. He was the most unassuming person that I've ever encountered, and I'm sure that most all of you have. He never assumed anything. He always listened to everything, and that brings me to what I think is his greatest attribute. I was talking with Glenn Hinkle. I don't know whether he's here today. Glenn used to be the bailiff in uh, Ralph's court, and he was with him constantly. And I said, Glenn, uh, they're going to have a dedication of the courtroom age for Ralph Phillips. What would you say is, is his finest uh, attribute? Of course, I didn't use that word to Glenn, but he understood what I said. <laughs> Don't be in here, I'm not trying to. <laughs> anyway, he said, listen. And it's just what Basil and Henry and Grady have all said. He listened. He didn't uh, cut you off. He'd stand and let you argue all day. And what uh, Basil and Henry and Grady have said, he, he didn't stop, uh, stop when the uh, court stopped. He would be down here late. And sometimes he'd stop court to listen to somebody who didn't have a lawyer or looked like he needed help. But he went out of his way uh, to see that our system works. I think that's a lesson for all of us, all of us to make the system work. We had a lot of criticism about the system, about our legal system. Most of it isn't merited. 
I think that uh, Ralph Phillips set an example for us by showing that he was completely dedicated to seeing that the system worked and tried to see to it that it helped people. That he got the right results. And that, that's what we all see is the right result. And that's what our legal system is about. And uh, uh, Ralph Phillips certainly contributed as much to it as anyone that we can think of. So when we leave here, I hope we leave uh, thinking and knowing. And when we come by, uh, that Ralph Phillips contributed his share to uh, making our judicial system uh, the fine system that it is. And when we come in this courtroom, we'll recognize that uh, here's something that is uh, for us to remember him by. Thank you all for listening. Thank you for all of us. I want to thank the family for asking me to say a few words. Uh, I haven't had many honors in my life, primarily because I didn't deserve it, but I consider that this one of my highest honors. Um, uh, I'm not going to repeat everything that everybody has said here, but everybody has said everything exactly the way I want to say. Ralph, uh, and I never call him Ralph to his face. He's always in his film. Ralph is the very finest man I've ever done in my life. And one of my very, very dearest friends. And I've been here now for 11 years, and Ralph made me welcome here from the very first day I walked into this courthouse. Although I did have trouble finding myself on my way around for several weeks after that. Um, the things that I remember most about Ralph, and that I will always remember about Ralph, is that he was one of the most caring, Passionate, understanding, giving people I've ever known in my life. Uh, he always had time for everyone, no matter what walk of life they came from or what socioeconomic class they came from. Uh, he found time to talk to people and to listen to them. And he did a lot of listening, as people have noted out. Ralph also did the share of coffee. And those of us who were around had to listen. He had a great deal of wisdom. Uh, and expressed that wisdom in every decision he ever made, in every conversation he ever had in connection with his business. More than that, he was good man. And I mean good when we can make all the attributes that all of us here in this room could assign to what constitutes a good man. Ralph was and will always be in my an outstanding jury. He was a dear friend to me. And I ain't saying all options. I miss him very, very much. Uh, and there's not a day that's gone by since he left us that I haven't thought about. But I will say this, whenever I think about him, I've never said it. Um, and I, I have to say and share this with all of you, although this is, I can see this a very intimate Whenever I think of Ralph, I smile. I have a very warm feeling. Uh, and whether I'm smiling on the exterior, I feel myself smiling inside. And so that's a memory that I will have forever and that I will always cherish. It's, it's so nice to be able to think of somebody and feel that warm, smiling feeling inside. That's what I feel. I will always appreciate having that feeling. Uh, and I hope I continue to have that feeling every day. I don't need, I'm delighted that we have this portrait of Ralph. I haven't seen it, and I, I hope it's a good likeness. But I've got Ralph's portrait right here and right here. And I don't need a portrait in this courtroom to make me think about Ralph Phillips. I don't think any of us do. Because he's here, his memory is here, he's here this very moment. And he'll be here forever. Uh, his memory will be a part of this community, uh, this smaller community. And his memory will be a part of my heart forever. Uh, for his
just having been with us and for his men, we are truly thankful. to have this opportunity to be assembled here with all of you and the Phillips family for this very, very special day. As you can tell by looking at this courtroom that it's a new courtroom. It's a very bright courtroom. It's a very comfortable courtroom for people who have to come up here on a daily basis to have their business heard. And I'm very happy that Judge Phillips had an opportunity to enjoy this courtroom uh, before he went to the hospital. And I know that he enjoyed it as much as the rest of us uh, have enjoyed it. I have some very special memories of Judge Phillips. I got to try my first case in front of Judge Phillips. It was down in little courtroom B. It was with Max Childers. And Max probably doesn't remember. Since it was my first one, I remember. And I can remember prosecuting cases and defending cases in front of Judge Phillips. And I had the privilege of being sworn in as a judge by him. And I had the opportunity and honor to serve with him for a period of time which was much, much too brief. After Judge Phillips had entered the hospital, I was so impressed by the family and how they encouraged me and everybody else that I heard them talk to to keep the courts running because that's what Ralph would want. And that was a difficult challenge that y'all gave us. But we tried the best we could. After Judge Phillips passed away, people made numerous observations about him. People talked about his humor and his quips. People talked about his love and his compassion. People talked about his computer-like memory, and it was, it was so impressive. People talked about how he used a good dose of common sense to clear the muddy legal waters. And we all respect him for doing that. And all these observations are accurate. And they're what make him special of all of us. It's important not the quantity of the days that we spend on this earth, but the quality of our days. And your attendance here today proves that there was a high quality to the days of Ralph Phillips. To his family, all I can say is I'm sure that we didn't love him the same way that, that y'all do, but we love him. We won't have to share the same memories of it that y'all do, but we'll certainly never forget it. The two short lines which read, Only one life that soon is past, only what's done with love will last. Well, Ralph Phillips acted with love and compassion when he was important. His contribution to the administration of justice in this county will be lasting. Judge Langston, I think it's fitting and appropriate today that we dedicate this courtroom with love, with respect, as a lasting tribute to one that was so special to all of us. <laughs> Thank you very much, Your Honor. Uh, Judge Langston, Judge Gaines, Judge Patty, Judge Carpenter, and Judge Stevens, members of the Phillips the family who are congregated today and distinguished guests, Judge Ramsour, uh, as uh, president of the 27A Judicial District, uh, it is our pleasure and privilege this afternoon to present unto you uh, a portrait of uh, the Honorable James Ralph Phillips, which uh, we requested will be hung in this courtroom, which this day is dedicated to his honor and his memory. This time we would like to fail that. Hopefully 
Hopefully everybody in this court will agree that that is a, a wonderful likeness of Judge Phillips. And it will be hung momentarily on the hook directly above it. And there's a plaque that will go next to it, which is essentially what Mr. Whiteside spoke to you all a couple of minutes ago. I'd like to again thank you all for coming. And it's obvious that Judge Phillips was a person who has been and will be missed by everybody here. And uh, I'm not going to dwell on and on, but I certainly miss him. And I had the pleasure, as did Judge Patty, of serving with him for an all too short period of time. But it was a wonderful experience and it was a learning experience since obviously Ralph, Ralph Phillips was a unique individual. Thanks again. Isn't that what you do when you don't want to be on camera? <laughs>
Good luck to you. I'll be seeing you around, champ. You take care. Here. Okay.